Hello everyone, it's Elaine here from Pink Peppermint Cards. Thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be recreating a card which I made for the Lawn Fawn number 80 card challenge, Fun With Food. So let's get started on the video. So I've taken the oven from the Sprinkled With Joy stamp set. I have got some Copic friendly cardstock in my Mini Misty and I'm inking this up with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. Once I've stamped the oven, I'm then going to place the tray into my Misty and I'm going to stamp that down a couple of times as well. Popping the rolling pin and the cookie jar from the milk and cookie stamp set into the Misty as well, stamping those out again with the same jet black ink. And then I've removed the cardstock from the Misty and I'm going to freehand, I can't believe I'm freehanding on camera, um, these, this little gingerbread man from the Sprinkled With Joy set. And not really worrying that they're perfectly straight because if I was making gingerbread men, they wouldn't all be perfectly straight on my baking tray. So I was happy with how they stamped out. And then I can move on to the colouring of my card. There is a lot of colouring in this card. I have really sped it up, but if you would prefer to skip through the colouring, then I will put the place to skip to on the screen and you can find all of the colour that I used down in the description box below and also on the coordinating blog post. So starting off with my pinks and then moving on to the cool greys. I mostly use cool greys for the oven. The inside of the oven where the gingerbread men are, I did use W markers. But other than that, most of the oven is cool greys. I'm not really too sure whether my light source is correct, but I just tried to add areas of shading on the oven just to bring the image to life. The same for the hob and the area where the cooker knobs are, just some darker shading at the edge coming in lighter. Now I'm gonna bring in my Memento marker in Tuxedo Black. I just added a couple of lines at the back just to help me map out where my shading needs to be. So just again coming in with the darker warm greys towards the back of the oven and getting lighter as I come towards the front and adding a bit of shading underneath the baking tray as well. Colouring of the baking tray again is cool greys, darker towards the back and getting lighter again towards the front. Now moving on to my gingerbread men, I'm using my E20 markers for these. I think in my original card I may have used the E30s, but any browns you have will work. I'm just putting most of my shading around the edge of the gingerbread men. Using my E40s and my R80s for the vanilla frosting. A lot of the colours are repeated, so all of the pinks will be the same colours and many of the browns will be the same. Just to give a nice cohesive look to the card. This little mixer is from the Baked With Love stamp set. I have used my silhouette machine to cut out this image as I don't have the coordinating dies. Again, the same pinks and then some darker cool greys for the top elements of the mixer and the mixing bowl is just slightly lighter. Next, I'm moving on to the little elves from the Holiday Helper stamp set. Just think these little elves are just adorably cute and I can't wait to use them on lots more Christmas cards for this year. Colouring her little outfit pink. And then for her little cup, it's exactly the same pinks. 
My little boy elf is coloured in E40 markers. I went slightly darker for the elf. So I've brought in the E44. Onto the skin tones, I'm using my E13, E11, E00 and E000. Really simple colouring. These are my go-to skin tone colours. Back to the cool greys, just to add some shading to the trims on the hat. And some Y markers and YR markers for the belts and the buckles. Some really simple colouring for the hair. I just added some shading towards the trim of the hat where natural shadows would fall. Just adding some tiny little flicks just to give the illusion of hair. RV21 for a couple of dots of pink on the cheeks. And now I'm moving on to colouring my cookie jar. Again, the same R markers, and then I bring in some lighter W markers. I've had this Milk and Cookies stamp set for so long, and I've never used it. The same for the Sprinkled with Joy as well. I've had it for so long, and I haven't really known what to do with it. And then I just had an idea, and it all came together so nicely. So sometimes it's just best to wait until you really get inspired by something. I'm adding on the smiley little face from the Sprinkled with Joy stamp set. There's a couple of little faces. I think in my original card, I used the, one of the faces from the Milk and Cookie stamp set, which is slightly bigger, but lots of lawn fawn sets have these faces. So I'm sure you'll find one to suit your mood. And there are all my elements all ready to go. So set them aside for a moment and I'm bringing in the quilted background die. Cut that from some white heavyweight cardstock and I'm bringing in some Distress Oxide ink in spun sugar, mainly focusing the colour on the top because the bottom half is going to be coloured by my kitchen elements. So just mainly focusing on the outer edge and then bringing in some picked Raspberry Distress Oxide ink and then some liquid stardust loosened with a little bit of water and splattered on with a paintbrush and I just love the sparkle this is my oven and I'm using some heavyweight weight heavyweight white cardstock to help bring my kitchen to life I'm just securing that down to my glass mat to help stop everything moving around and this is going to be my tabletop or my worktop I'm using Distress Ink in Ice Spruce. And then I'm going to mask that top bit off and bring in my Antique Linen Distress Ink. And this is going to help form my cupboard area. And I do remember to remove that bit of washi tape from the bottom. Then once I'm happy with the coverage of that, I will just bring in some vintage photo, mainly at the top, as my kitchen work surface would create a bit of a shadow. So now I've set that aside and I've brought in some, these are gonna be my cupboard doors. They measure one inch along the top by one and a half inches in length. I'm lightly blending on some Distress Oxide in spun sugar and Distress Oxide in Picked Raspberry. And this is some Lawn Fawn wood grain cardstock I've used here. I thought that would help bring the kitchen cupboard elements to life a little. And I did use my crocodile here to punch some holes. I do end up snipping off my brads, which is what I used for doorknobs or handles. But, um, yeah, not quite sure why I did that, but you could use them as is. But I decided to snip off those little legs. 
because I didn't want the extra dimension on the back. So I ended up just covering up those holes with some masking tape, popping a little bit of glue where those holes are and just popping the brads back on top. These little brads are so cute. They're really small. They're actually perfect for the lawn form reveal wheel. They don't sit too high. So I really recommend trying to get hold of some of those. I got mine off of Amazon, I think. I will link them down in the description box if I can find them. And now I'm just securing my quilted backdrop panel to an A2 sized card base. And then I'm going to be securing my little kitchen worktop area onto the bottom as well with some liquid adhesive. And now I can start adhering all my cute elements to the card. Let's pop some liquid adhesive on the back. Areas which will sit above the work surface area, I'm just adding some little bits of cardstock just to help everything sit flush. Adding some glue to the cookie jar, the frosting, and my cute little elves. I tried to line them up so that they didn't cover up the cookie, the cookie, the cooker little smiley face. So I'm just trying to position those little mugs a little bit out of the way of the smiley face. And now I can pop on my little cute cupboard doors. Trying to get them lined up as best I can and just trimming off any excess. And then to finish off the card, I am working on my sentiment. So I am using the sentiment from the Sprinkled with Joy stamp set. May your holidays be sprinkled with joy. So I've treated my cardstock with some anti-static powder. I've inked the sentiment up with Versamark ink and I'm using my Ranger super fine white embossing powder and melting that till it turns nice and glossy. And then I've taken some sentiment strip dies from my stash. I think I used my trimmer in the original card, but I was having real problems trying to line that up. So if you have sentiment strip dies, I highly recommend pulling them out and using them. And I'm using the same brown inks as before. So antique linen and distressed, uh, antique linen and vintage photo. Just darkening up the ends and coming lighter towards the middle but putting enough ink on there that you can see the sentiment so here I am just darkening things up a little it's hard to see and then I use my trimmer just to trim off the ends and I popped some double-sided tape this is a quarter of an inch I believe just burnishing that with my bone folder. I feel like that really helps to get that release paper off the back. Using my little T-square ruler to help line up my sentiment. There isn't a great deal of room, so I did have to tuck a few things behind the mixer and my little pink elf's hat. So just lifting that up gently and slotting that behind. And then I'm gonna add some little white highlights with a gel pen. I sometimes worry about doing this in case I ruin my whole card, but this turned out okay. And then adding some Nouveau Crystal Glaze on top. Did just colour in that little area there with the mixer to match the background. And that is this card complete. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know it's been a long one, so if you're still here, thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you next time.